you see some people that just go so hard on defoliation early where the plants are almost naked. I don't really know of too many plants in the world that grow without leaf surface, have photosynthetic active radiation without the leaves themselves. It's a unique strategy. And I'm not saying that's completely wrong. Some people go harder than others and you see finished flower development pretty, pretty good and pretty healthy sometimes. Other times you've got a really thin canopy. Yeah, you might have gotten light penetration down to the bottom of the plant lower than your optimal, you know, canopy volume density that you're really aiming for. And sure, maybe you increase like flower density at the bottom of the plant because you allowed so much light to come through and penetrate so low for so long before it kind of filled in. But what did you leave on the table? What opportunities did you miss out on by taking so much leaf away and not being very selective and just stripping super hard, you know? And and I don't know what the right or wrong answer is. Personally, for me, I've always been a little more cautious in that first stage of pruning. My rule of thumb is you can always take more off, but you can never put it back on. Be a little more cautious in that first stage and then allow things to kind of fill in before you go through that next secondary prune and defoliation event. And that's where you can get now more selective of getting that inner canopy leaf pulled out that's, you know, resting on top of the leaf surface of another leaf and potentially trapping moisture and creating a little pocket for a microclimate or a spot where powdery mildew may be more prone to develop with less airflow, that moisture being trapped within those leaves that are just resting on top of each other and no light penetrations getting into. Yeah, I think that's a good spot to pause on for a second. It's like the balance in plant work and pruning because on one side of the equation, every leaf that a plant produces is a photosynthetic area to some extent. And it's also like the storage reservoir for all the plant assimilates, like the stored carbohydrates from photosynthesis. So As the plant is taking in light energy and combining it with CO2 and water and nutrients and then storing these sugars, which it can use for metabolism later on, it does seem a little crazy to go along and take off all of those leaves with all of that stored energy that the plant worked so hard to develop. And I do see a lot of facilities that just go way too hard. One way to look at that that I think people are missing out on sometimes is you took off, you know, hundreds of pounds of leaf out of a room. That's hundreds of pounds of light energy and stored carbohydrates that the plant would like to be using later on in flower. And of course, the balance on the other side of that is we don't want leaves overlapping and shading each other, creating a shade avoidance response, blocking airflow through the canopy so much or shading out flower sites. I think it's, it is really smart to go through and think strategically. Sometimes I like to actually have somebody get up on a ladder and take a photo from directly above the canopy to kind of illustrate this and look down as if you're the, you're the light and look at the canopy and look at the trellis squares and see, is there gaps? Is everything completely filled in? How thick does it look? And then you can go down and strategically remove leaves to get that right balance where you're getting penetration so that light does get to hit most of the bud sites because we do want light on flower sites themselves that's going to help drive photosynthesis in those areas but we don't want light getting all the way through and landing on the table either and if you go above you look straight down onto a canopy and you can see white table space everywhere like through it then you know you messed up a little bit and went probably too hard and the plant's going to suffer in the long run from taking away too much of those stored assimilates like you said there's no one size fits all approach here it's about reading the canopy and understanding your plant spacing and how long the plants vegged for and what sort of plant touches they had while they were growing through the trellis and kind of reading that and making a decision about how much leaf matter are you going to remove here? What's your light intensity? How bright is it? I don't have really good numbers off the top of my head for this, but just as a exercise, I think sometimes it's nice for people to take a PPFD meter and like drop it down through the canopy. And you'll see like, if you have a really overgrown canopy where tons of overlapping branches, you get down close to nothing by the time you get, you know, 24, 30 inches into the canopy. If that's the case, then You've got to change something. You can mitigate that by doing a lot of de-leafing. But really, I'd like people to think one step further and think, how did I end up in this situation in the first place? Did I veg my plants too long? Was this a really stretchy strain that just 
overgrew the canopy? Was my plant spacing too close together? I try to think, how can we prevent this from happening rather than have to work reactively to mitigate it? I think that's a situation a lot of people end up in, was they end up in a bad situation, too dense of a canopy, and then they have to go through and just remove massive amounts of plant material. And it's just not efficient for the labor, not efficient for the electricity, all the light costs, the water, the nutrients that went into it. Looking down and seeing what you can see as far as the open bench top through the canopy and whether or not you went too far or not far enough. Matt and I, when we used to train people and go through facilities and, and teach them the proper ways to prune, a good indicator of how you were thinning that canopy out would be to identify how much light penetration is coming down through the table. You're on a stool or you're, you know, on a bucket or whatever you're using to to sit down or kneel by the, the table as you start pruning, you need to sit there and identify like, okay, I've got a pretty thick canopy. I, I don't really see any light penetration coming through and hitting the bench top. So using that as your initial indicator of how thick it is and then getting through like those first few plants or that first section to kind of gauge, okay, and now I'm getting like a nice little trickling effect of light coming through in a pretty uniform pattern and gauging that by then looking at the volume of how far up you're pruning and how far in you're getting to then set that as a standard for the rest of the zone, right? The rest of that table, the, the next tier, looking at it strain specific as well and the different phenotypic characteristics that different varieties have based on how thin the leaf structure is or how big and wide it is and, and dense and tight. You have to obviously identify that strain by strain and establish those unique characteristics as you're getting underway with your pruning technique. It's so simple instead of just going through and saying, well, you know, prune off 50% of the lateral branches on the bottom half of the plant and then 50% of large leaves above that bottom half. Everybody's going to be subject to their own opinion on what that means without drawing them a picture. But most people can, can identify a good full table view from the top down and ideal light penetration actually getting through the plant canopy into the bottom of the canopy and down to that bench top. So something I see a lot of people do when they do their pruning and defoliation is they'll remove a lot of the leaves through the lower and middle part of the canopy. Um, and I'm talking about the canopy in like the amount that's left over after they clean up the, the bottoms and they'll go through and they'll leave like a lot of the leaves at the very top of the plant. And the, I think the idea is which sort of makes intuitive sense is these are like the newest, healthiest leaves. They're going to be the most photosynthetically active. And I do think there's something to that, but I've actually found that I prefer removing a few more of the leaves in the very top 12 inches of the canopy and leaving a bit more near the bottom because the ones near the top are the ones that are preferentially blocking the most light to the rest of the canopy. And if you've got, say, a 30-inch depth of flower sites, well, you've only got a few flower sites in that top eight inches or so. And those are going to develop well pretty much no matter what. The majority of all of your flower sites are going to be in the middle canopy. I think a lot of people neglect that, that the majority of the plant's potential flower sites, the potential yield, are going to be below the tops. Because of that, I think it's really good to come through look at it and preferentially strategically remove those leaves up top so that light can penetrate down and then make sure that there's a, a catch, that there's still leaves near the bottom of your where your canopy stops to catch all of the light that makes it down that far. 